Welcome to the Brad and Taylor Show. Today we have Mindy Kesnick. You're listening to the Brad and Taylor Show, a podcast that inspires entrepreneurs to pursue their passions. We're sitting down with some of the best to learn how they got started and some lessons they learned along the way. Hey, Mindy. Hi, guys. How's Thank it going? Yes. What? What? Uh, tell us a little bit about you. Kind of what you do for uh, work and stuff, and then we can start from there. Sure. So I started out in this industry in uh, on the design side of things, and uh, I started with decorating, and then I I started sort of um, doing some remodel design work and things like that, and then real estate sort of fell into my lap through the company that I was working with at the time. And I started, so I started back in like late 16, early 17 and had a really phenomenal year and just really took off with real estate. And fast forward several years later, uh, I, I still do real estate full time. I do design work very minimally as my schedule allows. And now most recently I am running a team of agents. Nice. So did you, you said you did like designing stuff first? Yeah. How long did you say you did that for? Or was that kind of like, cause that kind of how you, like you said, how you got and it got started into the. Into yeah. Everything. I probably only did design work for maybe a year before nice. I got into. Kind of doing the real estate. The real estate side of things. Yeah. Yeah. Not that many people know about kind of the design side of stuff. Tell You want to tell us a little, explain a little bit more about like the design side of, uh, um, I guess yeah. Really well, so, you know, it's, it's obviously transformed a fair amount, but when I first started, uh, I was just sort of doing some decorating kind of, um, just, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do in the next stage of my life. I had quit my job in uh, healthcare to kind of help just raise our kids and be available. And so I started decorating just because I really loved it and I had a passion for it and I was told I was good at it. So I started doing that sort of, you know, as a little bit of a, a hobby and that whatever you want to call it. And then um, that sort of turned into getting involved in some remodel design. And so I reached out to a company, my husband's an electrician. So I reached out to a company that he was doing some remodel work for just to see if there was some way that we could collaborate. And they happened to have a real estate branch. So I actually joined them, got my real estate license, and then I started doing um, more of the remodel design work. And then that sort of led into designing. I, we, I designed a couple spec homes and um, helped them just with, you know, with clients that needed, wanted uh, their construction company to do remodel work. So uh, it is now, you know, I still carry that in through my business. I work with one builder specifically, uh, helping him just tweak designs and then listing the, the homes. So that's, awesome. that's a really fun way to, to kind of merge the two. That's awesome. So when you started out like going right into like selling houses now, how did that like transition go? Cause I know you talked about, you kind of were doing it and then you kind of switched over to real estate. Did you like, when you, did you join a team or anything to start out? Like, did you jump right into it full time? I did. I did. Not on purpose. Uh, I, I, uh, I thought that I would just sort of, you know, play around with it, see where it went kind of thing. And, uh, until my kids were in school full time and it just, I just kind of sort of took off. I started talking to people about it. I was really excited about it and real estate is an exciting industry. So yeah. it just, I just sort of was, I always say I was ignorance on fire and, um, my first year, I, I ended up being the top producer of the company that I was working with, and it just kind of went from there. So um, I, at that point, I was really, I was able to do a lot of the design work alongside of real estate because I was working for a company that had a lot of those, the systems set up to, to take on a lot of the legwork for the remodel and design side of things. Um, I recently... I, since then had left and was doing the re the design work sort of on my own mm -hmm. and that it, it was a lot more time consuming. So that's why I had to kind of limit that a little bit, but, but yeah, I did, I sort of took off right away in the, in the real estate world. And I was, I didn't have a team. I didn't really have, um, you know, even a really strong mentor. So when I talk to other agents who are new to the industry, that's something I always recommend. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think that, I think I just would have had a lot less stress 
in my first year of real estate had I been <laughs> learning, you know, on a team and learning from, you know, obviously some more experienced people. Yeah, that's awesome. So tell us about your like first transaction. How'd that go? Like first one as an agent? Oh my gosh. Well, my first transaction as an agent was my parents, of course. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you gotta start somewhere. Um, and I don't know, I, I think some people think, you know, oh, that's great because at least they'll be, you know, they'll be more patient or whatever. Um, I felt like it was super stressful because, you know, they, they hadn't bought or sold a house in, I, I mean, 20 years. And I was just so new that I didn't really, I wasn't a, a real great resource for them. So um, in hindsight, I'm like, gosh, those, my poor parents. Um, but it ended up, you know, I learned a lot uh, as you know, we, you do on your first several transactions and ultimately, you know, we accomplished their goal of selling and, and relocating. Um, but it was not without, without stress. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, your first one is always going to be stressful too, but then you add family on top of it. It's like exactly. added pressure. Yeah. <laughs> you right. have to do good for that one. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's really common because of course, those are the people you're most comfortable with asking, mm -hmm. you know, right. You know, all right. Will you, can I help you? Will you use me as your realtor? So, uh, I think that that's true for a lot of people, but, um, again, especially on your very first transaction, I think it's really, it's just good to have somebody with you. And, and I thankfully did have somebody that was just a little tiny bit more experienced than I was to, to, to sort of walk me through that. But, um, it's just, it's so valuable to have somebody with you on those first couple. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. When you first started out in design, um, or real estate, even, did you get any advice that has stuck with you throughout the years? Um, you know, I think that I have, I've read a number of books that have had little nuggets like that, yeah. that have stuck with me over, you know, over the years. One that, that sticks out that I read pretty early on is the one thing by Gary Keller. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I really early on identified what my one thing was. And it really has been something that has stuck with me from the very beginning of my career in real estate. I mean, there's a, there's a hundred thousand ways to do real estate, I think, and to get business through real estate and all of those things. But, uh, you have to really figure out what fits best for, with you and for you. And for me, it was always referral based business. And so my one thing has always been relationships and I think that that, that book, um, you know, and, and sort of figuring that out, it's something that I still, when I'm feeling like things are going off the rails because still several years into real estate that happens, uh, that is kind of still something that I go back to and, be, you know, remember, remind myself like, okay, my one thing is relationships. So how do I just make sure that everything is good with the relationships with my clients, my past clients, my family, my friends, you know, et cetera. Yeah, definitely. How do you balance? I mean, you're a mom too. So on that relationship topic, how do you balance your family life with your work life? Because I know you're busy. So how do you balance everything? Yeah. And I, I think that um, balance is like that word is a little means something a little bit different in, in an industry like ours. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The way that I look at it as, you know, when, when my business isn't pulling me in a thousand directions you know, 18 hours a day, I pivot and make sure that I'm providing that time to my family. So, and then, you know, my family understands that when, you know, when work is really busy, it has to be a priority. So, you know, for example, we went on vacation in, in January and I ended up working like almost the entire time we were on vacation, like every moment. And it was awful. <laughs> um, but then there's, there's plenty of like, we, we do go on more vacations because of the industry that I'm in yeah. and I, you know, and it balances out on another two vacations that I'm more dedicated to my family and able to pay attention to them. So it's not necessarily a balance on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. but I just really try to try to remind myself that when, when I do have the time and the opportunity that that they, that my family becomes the priority in those spaces that I can. And also for me, you know, I try to also prioritize things like, you know, my kids are, you know, they're the end of the school year is wrapping up. So I'm like, all right, let's put on the calendar a time where they can invite their school friends over and have a celebration or, 
um, you know, just putting those things in my calendar to make sure that I, that, that it doesn't just get accidentally filled up with work events or yeah. personal, you know, like social, social events or networking things that I'm really intentional about blocking time out so that my family doesn't get forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that sounds. No, time blocking is huge. And it's so important for yourself, even mentally, just to give yourself time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I definitely agree with time blocking. Yeah, it, it definitely helps. And I learned that, you know, a couple of years ago when, you know, your summers, summer hits and all, all of a sudden every single weekend is completely booked mm-hmm. and you realize, well, shoot, I don't have a, a single day to take my kids to Noah's Ark or um, on a picnic or a hike or anything. So we started as a family, we started blocking out um, Saturdays or Sundays or whatever it may be uh, in the beginning of the summer so that I, I know that at least one weekend of, of the month or one Saturday or Sunday of the month or whatever that I I'm playing, I'm booked and I'm busy and it's just to spend time with my family, even if it's doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. That's so important. So when you first started out in real estate, did you time block then too, or how did you structure your days back then compared to now? Well, um, one thing that I did uh, that I have in place now that I didn't back then that if I could do it all over again, I would 100% implement sooner is hiring a transaction coordinator. Um, and just, you know, just hiring independent contractors like that to help with different things, different tasks. One way that I'm setting up our team is, uh, finding, finding that people on our team that, that have a really good skill set for certain needs that we have so that they're not all falling on my shoulders and then just, you know, delegating those kinds of things to people that are the right fit for it. So I'm not the right fit to, to be, to take care of all of my paperwork because I am a people person and I would rather spend my time with people and in front of people and meeting with, you know, meeting with clients and doing all of those face-to-face things. Uh, but the paperwork is equally important. And so hiring somebody on the back end to make sure that I have a second set of eyes to be crossing T's and dotting I's. That's something that I spent a lot of time doing in my be in my first couple of years that now I, I don't, I would, I would never do again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. That I don't think many people realize there's a lot of paperwork on the back yeah. end. <laughs> yeah. It's very much that, that picture of the iceberg that, you know, you see that everybody sees the, the tip of the iceberg. And to some degree, that is our job as, as realtors, right. To make it look like it, you know, it's this happy, shiny object. Um, but really there is a giant block of ice underneath the surface that has to be chipped away at. And so for me, it's, I have to, I have to make sure that I have people in place to, to help with those things that I just, I can't do it all. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of your team, what kind of goals do you and your team have going forward for the next year? Well, that's a really great question. Um, for me, my, my goals are honestly just to help them accomplish their independent goals. Our team is set up very, very different than your traditional real estate team, as far as I know. Um, so my role as the team leader is, is more of like a coach and a mentor to the to our team. So I have my own individual real estate practice where I'm helping my own buyers and sellers. And then I have the time that I spent spend helping to, to do development and help them to grow their own personal businesses versus okay. I think the way that a lot of teams work is that, you know, there's a lot of agents trying to build the, the one business where I'm helping them try to build their individual businesses. So, and I have some agents, you know, that they just, they just want to, they have a goal of probably selling two or three houses a year just so that they can pay for their vacations. So my goal is to help them successfully accomplish that goal. I have other each, I have, I have other agents that are quitting six figure jobs and they're like, teach me, train me the ways I want to replace the six figure income with real estate. And I want to do it now. And so my time with is being spent and my goal is to help them do yeah. build a business that I have built in order to accomplish those goals of replacing that income. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's very different in the sense that it's um, there's, there's not necessarily like a team goal because it, 
it's very individual. Yeah. Yeah. I see how that would be different too. It's not very individualized. That's awesome. Yeah. And I love that you're taking your time to spend and help everybody else on your team grow too. Yeah. Um, and I think part of that is the model of the brokerage that I'm with. So it, it really encourages me to help other people's businesses grow versus a lot of like the old school traditional brokerages. If you know, like it, it just, it changes the way that the numbers work. And so yeah. it, it doesn't necessarily encourage lead agents to help other agents build their own business. Um, and that's what I love about this model is that it really, it, it really is exciting to me to help other people build their own business. And it's not about me. It's about them and helping them accomplish their goals. Yeah. I know you mentioned a book earlier. Um, do you have a book that you could recommend to anybody new starting out in real estate? Oh my gosh. Well, hopefully, um, in the next month or two, the, my business partner slash real estate coach that I hired, uh, almost two years ago now is. He is releasing a new book. Oh, nice. nice. For his first book, I should say. And okay. that is exactly his intention is to have it be like when, you know, like it's your first day in real estate and you're like, what do I do? What right. do I read? Here's this book. Um, so uh, I, I'm not actually, I'm not exactly sure what the name of the book is. You're going to have to let us know when it comes out so we can get our copy. Yes, I absolutely will. But yeah. I know that that's his like dream and vision is that, that he, you know, he sees brokers and lead agents and stuff, giving it to their brand new agents when they join, like, you know, as a welcome gift, because it is, yeah. he has, he wrote it to encourage and teach his coaching program and just kind of show agents how his program has, has been successful. So that will definitely be it, but stay tuned because okay. I'll have to do the, the name and the release date, but it should be in July. So it's coming out oh, that's soon then. Nice. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Sweet. Well, how can people get a hold of you? Well, probably the best way is Instagram. I'm just MK Real Estate and Design over there. Otherwise, Facebook, you know, Mindy Kesnick. I'm on there. Personal business, all the things. Sweet. I like it. Uh, that's yeah. awesome. So um, thanks for coming on and sharing your story with us today. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It was really fun. Yeah. Are these working? There right. we go. Oh, there we go. I think they're working. Should we tell them? Uh, Mine keeps falling. It doesn't do, like my voice. What do we got to tell them? Subscribe. Subscribe? What do we do? We got to point at it. Hey, I think there's a subscription button. Like it might be. It might be there. It might be right there too. Somewhere. Somewhere. Find it. It's red. Yeah. And red. it's blue. It's green. I don't really know. It's, it's a color. This mic isn't even attached. Did you plug these in? Well, I guess uh, I wonder if they can hear us. Yeah, I wonder if they hear us. Well, we should probably tell them if, if they can hear us. Uh, we should probably tell them also give us a five star review for listening to on Apple. That'd be cool. Five, five star stars, review. guys. Share it with everybody they can think of. We won't take but, four stars. I mean, I don't even think these are on. I mean, this no, is, I don't think this is working. This is not working. Yeah.